Good morning, everyone. Good morning, CSL Palm Desert and everyone around the world that's joining us. Are you there, Laura? Yep, I'm here. Laura, so good morning. We're so glad to have you here. It is Friday, May 8th. I feel like I'm um, a talk show host now. It's yeah. Friday, May 8th, and let's look at current topics. That's right. um, my guest today is Dr. Laura Shackelford. Um, we've been together now for, God. God, for how many years? 20? Yeah, it's got to be. 20. I mean, when did, you know, I don't think you were in any of my like basic classes because you went in the morning and I went at night, right? Didn't you take the basic classes? Yeah. But we got to practitioner class. We were together. It'll be 17. It'd be 20. It'd be 19 years this year. 19, almost 20. Yeah. Almost longer than my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's the second longest relationship with my husband. So that's pretty good. Um, We've been through a lot. Yeah, we've been through a lot, actually. And I, I thought I thought maybe today we would get together and just kind of chit chat a little bit and and intermix the things that have happened with our center for the past uh, twenty some years that we've been together, that we've worked together, and and not only that, but the teams that have come and gone, and and just how things have transpired and transformed to the way they are today. Because the set, the, what you see today at the Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert is definitely something that has totally transformed itself, I would say, almost 180 degrees since we took over, or since I took over in 2006. And um, don't you know it's going to continue to grow and unfold, and we're seeing that now with all these new ministerial students that we have. It reminds me of our class. Yeah, it does. It does, because there were five of us in our class, if I remember correctly, and there are five or six in our class, and there's five or six of them. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see where the future goes, you know, where it lies at our center. Yeah. Certainly, we'll see what that feels like um, in the next few years. We thought it was going to happen a lot sooner, but it's not really, I think we're sort of on a delay. I, I keep telling people um, that, you know, like, like even our daughter, Carly, I've been talking to her, and she's upset about some things that are happening in her pursuit of being an airline pilot. And I said, you know, it's, it may not be what you thought it was gonna be at the moment, but that's a delay, not a denial. I mean, it's a delay, not a, de exactly. It's a delay, not a denial. I think a lot of things have been hit, put on pause and on hold. Um, and for whatever reason, that's just the way it's going to be for a while. Right, you know? I, heard, I heard something which I thought was really good that we are in the, we are in the birth canal right now. Yeah. We left the womb which was the safety of what we knew and we're being birthed. There's no going back to the womb. Yeah. So yeah. we're pushing forward into a new experience. And there was no time for an epidural. No, no epidural. <laughs> no epidural. <laughs> so there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, discomfort. Yeah. Right. In this. Gotta breathe. Yeah, yeah. going to breathe, going to need partners, going to need, you know, right. all the help you can, all the help we can get through this one. But, right. but it's been an interesting thing. So um, I want to know about more about your class because I wasn't able to log in. Tell me more, a little bit about your class and how it went and some of the key points that you, that popped up during your recent class. Well, you know, what's been interesting. Um, so we're doing the Wayne Dyer's 10 secrets to um, success and inner peace. And um, what's what's interesting is it's amazing when you're doing books, uh, Dr. Joe, how you can tie it to what's going on now. And it's the same thing with our practitioner class. It seemed like this week was on both classes was all about trust, trusting yourself, trusting your inner wisdom, not blaming something outside of yourself. And so the, the thing is, is what we're finding out is all you have is now. This is all you have now. And so why are we awfulizing or projecting? Enjoy the peace of now, because this is where our creativity comes from. And, and this is where our inner peace comes from. And so um, it's I, there was there was a quote in the book I thought was really good. It says, "While eating your appetizer, don't be concerned with dessert." Okay, so you know, and so be in the moment and enjoy what's going on. Don't be thinking, "Oh, can't wait for this to happen." Meanwhile, we're missing out on what's happening right now. It's true. It's true. and of course. Any food reference is always good for me. That was so funny. Charles had a sports reference yesterday that totally went over, right over my head. your head. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
I'm not getting it. But food reference, I understand. The food reference, I understand. But no, and I think I, I agree with that. The, the, the issue that I have the most right now is um, eating the appetizer, so to speak, right? Seeing, being in the moment, but then also going, okay, now what do I have to do so that I make sure tomorrow I have what I need? It, it's almost like it, it used to be uh, the casualness in which we used to live. In other words, swing through the grocery store, swing through here, do this, do that. The, just the, you know, the spontaneity of doing all the things that we used to do. Uh, that is just, it, it totally lacks at this time. I mean, it, it really is a challenge because it lacks that. Um, we don't have that. We don't have, we, everything has to be planned and okay, where's my mask? And do I have my gloves? And do I have my this and my that? And it, it's, everything is sort of, um, it's, it's like the, okay, I'll give you an example. It's like the painter who paints. Yeah, you have everything in the cupboard, but you have to bring things out one at a time and make a, a, a mindful plan. Whereas before you just used to get to it, right? Before, we used to just get to life and now everything has to be mindful. It's like, you can't pull out of the garage without your mask. You can't do those things. So things have to be pre-planned. So that it's been different. I have a Wayne Dyer story, a funny Wayne Dyer story. So years ago, when my parents were living in Flint, Michigan, they um, Wayne Dyer came in to be a guest speaker, and I thought, well, that'd be kind of fun. I was in my gosh, I was I must have either been in college or my early twenties, and um, they at Unity Church of Flint, which you know wasn't this big monster of a building or anything like that. It was just a small little church, but he was he came in to be a guest speaker to talk about how you can lay plans for a larger work. And I remember I had dinner with him. I actually sat next to him wow. uh, and had dinner with him. So that was quite the experience to meet Wayne Dyer and then to know that he talked at our center one time or a couple of times for Dr. Tom. And did you did you meet with Wayne at one of those functions in Hawaii? Was he part of was he a participant in that? No, he wasn't. It was just Neil Donald Walsh, Marianne Williamson, the Jampolskis, who read who wrote uh Fear, love is letting go of fear, and then a t and Tom Hartman, which I didn't know that that well. Um, he wrote some some spiritual book, and I think he has some podcasts and stuff. And and of course, I met um, Barbara Marks Hubbard on a different occasion. So, um, but yeah, the, it, it's interesting, isn't it, to be with somebody out? So, what was it like being out of his element, so to speak, where he's up there? sharing and be with him on a personal level well it's funny because i think um that he was really quiet you mm -hmm. expected him to to command the table but he really wasn't commanding the table. he was very quiet actually and you know we were talking like this but other people were trying to talk in a broader sense but he barely engaged in that he was very quiet and reserved which i what i have found is a lot of people who are in public like that um, they are very quiet. They're very introverted. They get out there, they do their job, they do what they do. But then when they're done, they, they sort of become quiet. And I think that's, that was the most interesting thing about Wayne. Well, he led quite a life. So you know what I do, I do want to tell people, um, uh, part of the, part of the reason for us gathering today is just for those people who don't know the history, um, some of you do, but a lot of you really don't know the history of CSL Palm Desert. And we want you to kind of get that over, over this broadcast today and then one day next week, um, how, how you and I came to be where we are today, because there was a real different route that everyone took. Um, I'll, I'll give part of the story, then you can take it from there. Uh, Laura and I and a bunch of others, uh, Bill Thompson, Michelle Renahan, Marion Hamilton, Marion Whiteman, um, uh, who else was it? Linda Angel, David, uh, I forget his last name. Anyway, there were several of us that were all, Dr. Tom had several ministerial classes going at one time. And over the course of three years, he graduated three classes. And into those three classes, most of us stayed at the center. Um, most of us were there. And uh, the last part of our practitioner class was that we were in prep class. Mm -hmm. when Dr. Tom retired. retired. Well, we had just started our first year because yeah. I remember we had Dr. Bill Tolliver mm -hmm. and that was the whole reason I went to practitioner class because I loved the way he taught. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the first or second or third class he announced that he, he wasn't going yeah. to. And we all went, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. 
so we were all in practitioner training together and then bill left uh we continued our practitioner training with reverend patty spicer who um, i'm not sure where she is right now but every once in a while she'll pop up at the center every now and then it's always good to see her but in the interim uh there was this time when bill was there um where we were still going through ministerial training and tom came back and he completed that for us so we all graduated at this at the same time or within one year of each other i think right. we were all so our first year we had reverend patty spicer too as our ministerial teacher didn't we no. did we have her oh, oh no she, no that was all practitioner and then we went to dr tom that's right so what happened was there was a team of people that came in and part of the premise of that was when tom came back and he was teaching us second year ministerial training uh he and i were talking and i said you know, I was there to collect, I was sort of Tom's protector. I was his guardian because he came back and the circumstances just, let's just say we're not optimum for him, but we were protecting him so he could stay in place. And what was interesting was um, I had mentioned to him, I said, look, you know, if you ever plan on retiring again, you can't retire without having a staff in place, a, a, a real foundation of leadership. And that was missing at the time when he retired the first time. And so I said, so, you know, as we go through this ministerial training, and if you think I'm going to become your assistant, it would be really, really nice if you would allow me to install ministers to take staff positions within our organization. And so he allowed me to do that. Remember, he said, okay, I want nothing to do with them. You super, you install them, you supervise them, you take care of them. I'll just, you know, I'll keep doing my thing. And so that's how all of us actually began our ministry was that we were trying to create a secondary tier of leadership underneath Dr. Tom so that there would be Dr. Tom and then there'd be a level of staff ministers to be there so that when Dr. Tom retired again or it went, when it happened, that people would have a place, you know, they would have points of reference that they would know which is why we're doing everything we're doing with the sensational six and, and, you know, have our, our leadership team the way we have it now is because as I began to segue out, I wanted to make sure that we did the same plan, which is we were running a little bit low on that secondary tier of leadership. And Whoa, so I don't think we even had another minister. Did we at, at that time when, when Dr. Bill took, when Dr. Tom retired, he brought in Dr. Bill, that was the only minister. Oh no, we had Reverend Sam. Too. Reverend Sam and Janora. That's the, right. And they were, but and they were pastoral care more than anything. Exactly. They weren't like leading. No. I think, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. We were. It, it wasn't there. So the second idea was that we would get this leadership team, and so you and Bill and we all had we all had our places of expertise that we all became involved in, and I think that that's important to to note for this time. You know, part of part of what the transition and uh, that's taking place at our center now is that we are beefing up that level of leadership so that as we move into new leadership, there is this new level there of, of competency of people that um, our congregants can relate to. So I guess that's the point that I really wanted to bring up is that we're, we're actively moving in that direction once again to make sure that everyone has what they need at that level. That's important to me and important to us. Right. I, I enjoyed when you talked with um, Dr. David Alt about how we all got into ministry because none of us really, truly, I never even intended to be a practitioner, just continue because I, I was starving for the teaching and that was just the next step. And then I wasn't going to go on to prep to be a minister. And Dr. Tom, so smart, he calls me in and he goes, Laura, are you going on to be a minister? I go, oh, no, that's not for me. And he goes, well, you know, I see something special in you. And I'm like, really? And then he goes, and he said, Joe and Bill and Marion are going on. And we had created such a bond in practitioner training, especially and ministerial or practitioner training. And I'm like, well, I want to be with them. I don't want them to go on and I'm not part of that. And so I, I took it too. And I wasn't even going to be a minister. I just kind of be in there to be with you guys and learn more and so forth until I took the written test. And then I thought, well, God, I did really good in that. Maybe I will go on. Yeah, it was. It was quite an experience. Uh, someone just asked if we're going to do a prayer. Absolutely. I'm going to close with one. 
that's okay. Sorry, I, I tend to just try to close with them and sometimes I forget, but we will definitely close with the prayer. So we'll, divine person, whoever you are, divine person, it says divine person. Uh, yes, we will do one for you for sure. Um, so moving on. So going back to your Wayne Dyer thing, I'm going to go back to that. So we talked about the, the, you know, not awfulizing, which I think is really important. And it's very easy to awfulize. I mean, just today, I'm on a, I'm on the tail end of a fast. Um, uh, yesterday, I declared a media fast oh. that was going to not, <laughs> yeah, uh, social media, if anything had any, I was, I, I've been only watching funny things or uh, I haven't been engaged in any part of the virus or the awfulizing around it. And um, so I, I'm very happy. I'm very happy to report that I'm on the, I'm, I've almost made it 24 hours and didn't do that. And I probably need to continue that. But I do know that it's all out there. I do know that the projections and everything are out there. And it's once again, we're, we're going to be, anybody that's listening to this, uh, we are going to be subject to the mass consciousness as a result of this period of time that's going to lay out how things will recover. And if we decide as a mass consciousness to sell off and go into a depression and go into a recession, the masses will decide that. And they will be driven by other sources outside of themselves, in other words, the media and other things that will scare us into doing that. And I just caution everyone because we don't have to do this. We can, we can recover. We can come back and, and get back to, quote, normal as quickly as possible. And we don't have to live out the projections of other people who are telling us that it's going to take two to three years to get back to normal and this and that and the other. It's like, who says? I mean, I would love to know who called these people God and decided that, um, you know, that's the way it's going to be. It's it's kind of insane, and we've seen this how many times, Laura? After 9/11, we saw it as ministerial people, uh, ministerial students, and then as again in the recession, and you know, in, in the ups and downs of things, we've experienced this, and we've witnessed it so many times, and and we're still here, and we're still here, and we're still thriving, and you know, I just I, my my prayer is that people will be receptive to the possibilities of what can happen and not the predictions of what people tell us will happen. Because yeah. we, we, can, we can change the whole course of that. But if the society as a whole decides to get a hold of this and grab onto it, then this period of reawakening will be for naught. It will be a lot of struggle. And at the other side of it, it's gonna be more struggle. I want to think that we're giving that this struggle that we're experiencing now is giving birth to transformation, which will have an element of, 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 of not, I don't want to say pain, but giving birth is painful, but it won't be as protracted and as long as everyone's speculating on the, in the media and things. I, I just, we've been through this. We've danced this dance. Absolutely. One of the quotes um, that we read was, don't let the, from Wayne Dyer in the book study, don't let the elusive present moment get use, used up by thoughts that aren't in the here and now. And so what, what I've come, I, I love your idea about the fast from media and social, because here's the thing, we have so many different things. The people are theorizing about the cause, who's at fault, who's, and it's like, who cares, you know? And the thing is, is, you know, I, this is a time I feel, and what I'm trying to do is to be at peace, to, to really use this time to go within, because like I said at the beginning, all we have is now. And so like you're saying, Dr. Joe, let's create, let's give birth to that same peace that we feel right now. And, you know, I, I, you know, people will send me their, what they believe is the truth and what other people believe and, oh, Dr. Laura, we need to get this message out. And I'm like, no, do we really? No, we, we, we really don't. If that is what you want to believe, fine. I don't want to get caught up in the pointing fingers of, oh, they created the virus or, you know, I don't care. I believe the universe created this. It's a time for us to 
really, really get grounded in who we are and where we're going and what we want. And so to listen to all the, you know, you know, oh, the, the deaths aren't that many, they're lying about who doesn't matter, you right. know, and so take care of yourself, take this moment takes care of the next moment, keep your loved ones near you keep in contact, you still but I agree with you, Dr. Joe. And I think this is, this is, I think this is the universe giving us a do-over, <laughs> an opportunity to reset and go on from here and be realize how much we do have. Yeah. And I mean, um, I shared with just before the call, I shared that um, a friend of mine that I used to fly with a lot uh, years ago, um, a 58-year-old flight attendant friend of mine, he made his transition. I, I don't know when, I just read it. Uh, just before I came on and he died of the, of the virus itself. And so, and I, I bring that up only because it's very real. You know, the effects are very real. And, um, you know, my heart aches for him and his partner and his families uh, and their families. And, and I, so a part of that element has to be a, a greater sense of compassion for people who are moving through things because we tend to, um, we tend to isolate those things and not really recognize them for what they are. So I want to make sure we're acknowledging that, yeah, that this thing has been very real. I mean, I walked through it, Trey walked through it. Thank God we walked through a mild version of it. But now some, another one of my friends has passed away and I watch this and I go, okay, now how's that changing my outlook in what's going to happen? So be in the now and feel the grief of the now, but also know that okay, I think what's this is, maybe is this calling, I need to be a little bit more um, connected to other people and make more of an effort because in our busy lives that we had PC, pre-COVID, um, I think we need to, um, you know, or BC, before COVID, we'll call it BC before COVID. I think we need to um, examine, were, were we pedaling as fast as we were pedaling in the direction that, you know, had a greater good, my good attached to it, but did it have a greater good element involved in it? You know, is there something beyond the me? I think a, a lot of times in, in metaphysics in particular, in metaphysics in particular, there's always emphasis on, you know, me, 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 and how it affects me. And I, I got to fix my life and I can't fix other people's lives. Me, me, me. And, and, and while we, we dabble in the how it affects others, type conversation, I think we may need to expand that a little bit. I think maybe, it, okay, so I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I think in our resistance to other mainstream religions who have a component, a service component in their philosophy, that's missing in ours. Mm -hmm. That's truly missing in ours for a lot of people. I'm not saying everyone, but right. for a lot of people, you know, we don't have the obligatory more compassion uh, it feels like we don't have that compassion yeah or, yeah or, or, or we don't have the obligatory service that is expected of 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 participants in our own religion and our own philosophy maybe we need to look at that and, and not call it obligation but recognize that hey look there's a scope of service that you know service to the greater humanity how can we engage that in this next phase? Because we do a lot of fixing and repair work with the self, but we don't do as much outside in service in the community as we can to make that impact, to share that impact with other people. I, I, I don't know, just something to think about. You know, I agree. And one of the things about this COVID that I think just so touches my heart is these people that are making their transition due to the virus cannot have, be surrounded by loved ones right. uh, or the loved ones can't be there. And I just, that does touch my, how many ever it is, it's the thought of being totally alone on this moment that you're making this huge change in who you are in life and how it affects so many people. And not just the people with COVID though, if anyone in a hospital, or nurse, yeah. I can't even visit uh, Reverend Janora because she's in an assisted living facility and you can't even go in. No, I mean, my mom. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you're like, okay, how do you, 
how do you convey what you need to convey in that environment? So this is this is calling us to actually be more aware of what's going. Again, it, this is all an awareness of what's going on. Someone asked in the questions here. Um, comments first. I believe we will reinvent our future in a greater way that we can that even we can imagine now. And I believe that to be true. I think um, as this goes on and on and on, um, it's pushing us. Actually, here here's what I'll say: as this goes on and on and on, I am really um, aware of the people around me and their reactions to going on and on and on. And, and I'm seeing some true colors in businesses and in personal relationships and other things where I go, wow, okay. Here I thought this kind of business was a compassionate blah, blah, blah. And, and now that, it's, that things have been challenged, I can, people, are not being, people are being mistreated. And so I'm like, wow, okay interesting to note it's interesting to note how the true colors of things are coming out and i'll just leave it at that the true colors are coming out and now we have to imagine a world that surrounds everything in love so that the transformation occurs on a higher level into that space does that make sense no it does it's like so when you squeeze a lemon you expect to get lemon juice right so now we're all being squeezed in yeah. one way or the other, what's coming out? Yeah, yeah. The you is coming out, don't yeah. you? Think? I yeah. mean, you could, you might be able to paint it yellow like a lemon or orange. That oh, I'm an orange. But if but you're a lemon inside, it's you're coming. a lemon inside. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. all right. So here we go. Another one. Um, what should our um, treatment work be focused on? Yeah. Well, I know what mine is. Mine is, mine is peace, peace. <laughs> and I say it because in my mind, peace and peace of mind embodies and encompasses and includes all those areas of life. I'm also praying for all those, I, I do, I, I say a prayer for all those people who are on the front lines for yeah. their safety. I, I visualize them. I actually visualize them in this light, this white light, that anybody who is, and I'm not talking about just COVID workers, I'm talking about anyone, anyone that is involved in any way, shape or form with medical care um, or at the grocery store, anybody who's a front, a, a first responder or, or someone on the front lines right now, I pray for their safety. I, 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 in my mind, it's like the, the clerk and the person working at the bank behind the, tele, uh, all of it, just all of it, because, you know, not everybody is actively engaged outside of the walls of their home. Some, you know, a lot of us are working from home, a lot of us, but we're not on the front lines face to face with people. And I think a lot of my prayer work has to be surrounding those people in, in, in a light of protection, like the prayer protection, it, 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 it surrounds them. I hope that makes sense. Right, it does. And, and also my prayers, I also include those that aren't as maybe fortunate as me, those workers that really are having to stand, drive in those food lines to get food and really concerned about their family and their next meal and what they're going through. And so to have compassion for them and what, what they're going through. And so, yeah, but, but you, you know, Joe, Dr. Joe, that peace thing, the thing is the more that we're at peace not from an egotistical, oh, me, but just there's an energy that we radiate out into the universe. And, you know, and so when you do go to the store with your mask, you, you just have an energy around you that, yeah. you know, it's like, God, I almost want to reach over and kiss that checker at Albertsons just because oh, they're, they're doing, they're, they're, they're doing that work for us. And, um, and so I think it's the whole picture of what your prayer, and I would say your prayer, what is it that you, your treatment work should be, what is it that comes to you in that prayer that you, there's no should pray for, it's, it's, right. what, what are you called to pray for? Receptivity. Yeah. 
I have to be receptive. All right, right. So here's the question. What's the most memorable time for each of you as ministers working at CSLPD? Oh, God. I think we get so many. <laughs> oh, gosh. Gosh. Um, oh, my God. That's going to be really uh, a Oh, I, okay. I can tell you what are the most memorable times for me. I, don't, I can't peg one, but I can, because it, it, to me, it embodies this whole idea. Um, the most memorable moments for me are when we have um, incredible music at the center. And I mean, I feel when we have a musician uh, or, or a guest artist or one of, even in our own band, our CSL ensemble, they're the same way. When something amazing happens up there, I just feel like I have been so gifted and blessed by the opportunity to call this where I work. That literally, that's where I go. I have mo I, and I have so many moments like that because um, I remember the first time I heard Levi Christ sing "Stained Glass Window," and just literally just crying because I mean, here I am in in our center, having this having this thing happen for me and for everyone that was there, and it was such a moving experience. The the best times of my ministry have been when I can just feel this thing moving and just. Uh, uh, so that's one of my highlights. Um, and, uh, yeah, that would be my highlight, I think. And I, cause I can't limit it down to one. I can't. I even know. I, I, I was trying. One. Yeah. God, it's to me, it's, you know, I guess one of the hardest things right now for me, if I wanted to be really honest is not being at the church. Yeah. It's like every Sunday to come into that sanctuary and to feel the love and the camaraderie. I remember somebody complaining about our pre-service music being too loud and, or not being loud, not, no, that people were talking too much during the pre-service music and they wanted to hear the music and they wanted me to tell people to stop talking. And I'm like, no, this is our family. This is why they, that's part of why they come to service on Sunday is the joy of hearing Dr. Joe and hearing the fabulous music, but to be together in a spiritual community. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to tell them to stop talking. I said, maybe you should move your seat where they're, you know, to the wall where people aren't gathered and talking. Right. You know? Because but it's true. I mean, and, and those are the moments, man. I, I did have a moment and I, I think I shared it. We have, we have staff, I, people don't know this. We have staff meetings once a week. Um, we are, um, we have staff meetings once a week. We have practitioner meetings. Um, so we're continuing to meet with the, with the teams on and on. I think one of the biggest challenges um, I had was when I pulled up to the center, uh, I think it was about a week ago. And I a friend of mine sent me, I'll just backstory. A friend of mine sent me a picture of the device that they use to intubate patients. And I was like, ooh, when I pulled up to the center and there's no cars around it, and it, you know, here's this building on this island that has just been, you know, for all practical purposes, shut down for its purpose. Um, I literally felt as if someone had taken that intubation instrument and put it inside our center. And it's just, we're on life support. This, the building itself is just on life support. It's on limbo. We can't go in, we can't, you know, we can't, people can't commune there. And that's been one of the toughest things for me to, to witness is seeing that thing uh, on life support going, Okay, and and there is there's an expect there's an expectancy and, and and I'll just say it again, there is an expectation that that center is going to be what it was before people left, and in order for to do that, I need people to be who they were, and I need them to be that throughout this process so that we can come back to that. That's my biggest concern right now when I look at that giant building and all the things that all the people that employees and all the things that need to be done and, and keeping it moving I pray that people continue to say look this is really important to me. we need to keep this going so that's just part of it but my most memorable moments that this is what that started with are the moments when when the music just brings me into that place and just moves me just moves me now someone did ask a question though let me get to it um let's see 
If you had to go back and change anything, what would it be? Oh, I know what I would change. What? We'd have gone to one service in the summer years ah. ago. <laughs> we would have gone to one. I think I mentioned that to you uh, the year before, and you go, no, I don't think so. And and I was like, so when you did it this life, I'm like, oh, yes, yes. I mean, I never really toyed with the idea, but boy, when we went to one service in the summer, that was amazing. How come I didn't do that years ago? Right. And not only that, doing the one service, people that would always go to the nine or would always go to the 11, they got to, oh, you go here? <laughs> yeah. Well, and people got to meet. There was an energy. There was a buzz there. Oh. It, had I had, if, if I had to do over again, that would have happened a lot earlier. I agree. I, I, but agree. I have very few regrets about go back and do over. Well, I, um, we wouldn't be who we are now. Yeah. As a center, if we really yeah, I, I think that th that in and of itself, that's a good question though. And that's that's the only thing I would go back and do over. Yes. I don't, you know, everything else seemed to be timed right. And, you know, staff, I'm thinking about people moving in, staff moving in, staff moving out, you know, renovating the church when we did the total renovation. Um, uh, no, and I, 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 you know what? I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it. All right, a couple comments here. The power of now, Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> oh, hi, Jeff and Brooks. <laughs> I love that. Um, thank you, Dr. Joe, for keeping the church staff and ministers connected with us daily at 10 a.m. during this challenging time. It really means a lot to me. Even if I don't or cannot connect daily, it's reassuring to know it's available to all of us as a united spiritual community. Thank you for, thank you for that. Um, let's see, Dr. Joe, it's your birthday on Monday. What are we all doing? Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're skipping over this. That's what we're doing. Next one, Laura, good to see you. Miss you and love your uh, love you and your daughter. That's from Amy Morrison. Russ and D, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Thank you, guys. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Laura mentioned Tom Hartman, a prolific author, including The Prophet's Way and many ADHD books, um, pioneered the concept of hunters and gathers of knowledge. He founded in school for emotionally challenged children in New Hampshire and more recently, uh, very immersed in political arena, including a radio show. Truly a Renaissance man who is a good friend of the ancient wisdom, new thought movement. Just wanted to share this since I know him. So whoever you are, Divine Chatter, thank, thank you for you. that. Uh, Dr. Laura, my sister is really struggling with not being able to be with her grandchildren during, uh, grandchildren. during FaceTime. She feels her grandson doesn't recognize her. Any help? Um, you know what? Because I have my grandchildren. Of course, I've got a baby baby and then I've got my um, um, Olivia who's going to be three in June I'm wanting to hopefully get to be that with her on her birthday but but here's the thing I don't worry about, I, I wouldn't worry talk to them as much as you can like Olivia will talk and she, she does recognize me and I mean you know but then she's off she she's off to the next shiny thing just you know what they're part of you. Don't worry about that. Whenever you do connect, that soul connection will be there. And it doesn't matter. They're, they're living their little life right now. And but you will always be an important part. It might take them a few minutes to warm up to you at first when you they see you. But I don't think so. I, I wouldn't see my, my granddaughter the last time she was here. One thing that we have is she likes my lipsticks. <laughs> And as soon as she saw me in the car, she went like, give me, I need lipstick, you know? So, and we, we hardly talk. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy whatever time you get to have with them and just know it's all fine. I also would say this, um, whoever that, whoever wrote in that question, kind user, will you let me know how old she, this person is? Her grandson doesn't recognize her, how old your grandson is. Yeah. Cause that's just that right in the comments because, um, after talking with Carly about the things she remembers, I mean, all the wasted trips we took her and she doesn't remember hardly any of them. I'm thinking, oh my God, here we're trying to create these magical moments and we, you know, moving heaven and earth to experience this while when she was a child growing up and even, you know, even five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, she's like, God, I remember this much of it. So it's like, to me, to us, the distance is much more difficult, but to them, their concept of time isn't anything like ours is. No. So, you know, for us, time goes very fast. To them, it goes very slowly. And it's not, the separation is not in, excuse me, that profound. And there, there will come a time when you do reconnect, 
It'll all come back in a matter of time. And this will be a distant memory, one that for them is already a memory. So, okay. Right. So I'm a lot older than Dr. Joe. And so here's the thing. We didn't have FaceTime. I mean, we didn't, we, you know, and I, I would see my grandmother once a year, but as soon as I, I wouldn't even talk to her for the whole year, you know, would not even talk to her. But as soon as I saw her, I knew that was my grandmother and we bonded and we had a great time. And then I left and, you know, so please, no matter what age they are, you'll be fine unless it's, they're teenagers. And it's more, and it's more painful for us. Yeah, it, it is. It is. The pain is. It's more about our, our feeling a sense of loss that we've missed out on something. Yes. And that's that that's part of this grieving process that happens in this pandemic. It's a loss of time. I mean, I that that's where that I'll be honest, that's where my biggest resentment lies right now. Is I thought, you know, damn it, this was supposed to be, you know, a great season at the church. This was supposed to be my time to go off on a sabbatical and prepare for this part of my life. This was supposed, and I felt robbed of my big season with all of my my congregants and and this experience of bringing you know Reverend Charles in and 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 just acclimate doing that whole thing, and I felt robbed and I felt robbed of not being able to travel and and um, I felt like something was taken from me. So my biggest one of my biggest challenges is to forgive the fact that I am feeling robbed because really nothing was taken from me. It was just a change of a pathway. My expectations were something and now they've changed. And now it's like, okay, now adjust Joe. But I can understand a lot of us feel like we've been robbed of time with our grandkids or, or for whatever reason, work, um, time with family, uh, you know, all, all of that. It, it, it may feel very much feel that way. And it's a valid feeling. It's not a wrong feeling to feel that way. In fact, feel it. I mean, I got angry about it. It's like, ah, you know, but then I realized, okay, I'm beating my head against the wall for what? For nothing. I can't change this. In fact, that leads into the questions. Jeff asked, if someone asked a question, we talk about manifesting. How do we consider manifesting things outside of our control? Like when we pen up, uh, when we pen up and are able to begin getting back out there like when we're penned up I, I don't understand um like when we pen up like when we're pent up when we're I don't know how to read this oh, but I can tell you the question we talk about man how do we consider manifesting things outside of our control so as we begin to get released into this the wild <laughs> the, the, whatever the new world condition is is um uh, this is the way I've had to put it with the center and with everything else. I cannot have an expectation. It's not going to be the way I would do it. I have to follow. I'm, I'm choosing to follow science and my local government. That, that's all I'm doing right now because I cannot risk, put anybody at risk at the center and I don't want to put myself at risk. So what I'm doing in terms of man, getting ready to unfold is however much capacity we're given, I'm going to choose to maximize that capacity. That's all, whatever, whatever I'm given, we will, we will, we will do whatever it is. Now, what, now, whether that's in my personal life, if we're given the ability to go travel, then Trey and I will take the maximum benefit of what travel looks like and we'll, we'll take a trip. You know, whatever that's opened up, whenever a door opens, I plan to walk through it uh, and, and, and with, with great confidence and knowing. So I think everybody uh, needs to decide how they're going when things open back up. Um, we just, <laughs> to me, there's going to be this mad rush to start accomplishing all the things that were put on hold. <laughs> so that's going to be a challenge in and of itself. Does that make sense at all? Absolutely. So um, I don't know if I answered that question or not. Uh, well, I think you did. So here's the thing too. So we use our sprints, our, our spiritual principles, the law, right? And we've, and, 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 but we also have man's laws. And so we have to follow what guidelines were, were given, just like Dr. Joe said, the worst thing is if we just said, oh, we're not, we're just going to throw out what all the guidelines are. And then somebody in our congregation or multiple people in our congregation got ill. We have to live with that. And the think that we were 
contributing to that would be the last thing we want to do. So, so, you know, so I, I don't, I'm, I don't think we're worried about it other than the senses. We know that when that time comes, we're going to have to sit down as a team and say, okay, how can we do this for the whole congregation, our staff, everybody to make it a good experience and a safe experience. And just in, in life in general, right. uh, life in general, because it's not just about how our center is going to open, but I'm going to touch on that briefly because I know a lot of people are watching from the center. Um, you know, we have, a. it's not like we haven't started our preparation. We've actually been reading uh, different articles from di different ways to open up. And we're making preparations about, you know, if we have to pull out half the chairs, where do we go? You know, social distancing, uh, all of those things. I'm having Jerry Lynn rework the songs because obviously we're not going to be able to greet each other the way we used to greet one another during an opening song. Um, things are going to change temporarily. Things will change temporarily. And I just don't want people to get upset about the temporary changes that we're making, no, thinking that they're long term. No, as, the, as things change, will change. As things adjust, will adjust. But I was not cavalier about closing down the center ahead of everyone else. I was a week ahead of everyone else. And I will not be cavalier about opening it either. We will be very, very responsible in doing what we're going to do because I don't, I would never want our place to be a place where people would ever um, be sick. Right. I want to be quite the opposite. So, and then in general in life, in general in life. So let's just take it out of the centers and say, look, you know, there is going to be a certain element of risk. And we all know this in science of mind. We talk about when you accept, when you, when you're challenged by something, when you do something, you're always measuring, uh, you always take into account, you know, what are the good things that can happen and what are the bad things that can happen? We, we evaluate that and then we decide to spend the spiritual coin. And the spiritual coin means emotional, financial, physical, or, um, or spiritual. We, we trade in a coin. And so we're all going to have to, we're going to be prioritizing our life based on the inventory that we've done during this time to decide, okay, this is where I want to put my experience. This is where I want my experience to go. Um, I have noticed that, and I was, I'm so pleased there are some of my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, some people that were so concerned when their businesses got shut down at the beginning of this, some of my congregants and, you know, in talking with them, I'm like, okay, this is a time for you to dig deep and become very creative. And I'll be damned if I didn't talk to them last night. And I said, so how are things going? They're like, I've had this, I had the second busiest month I've had in 10 years just this past month. And I'm like, well, what did you do? And, he, and this person had recreated what they were doing. And same with his partner, they recreated what they were doing. And suddenly in this creative process, they brought back the sense of normalcy and then some, because they weren't, they had to change what they were doing and they had the ability and flexibility to be open-minded enough to do that. And so they were, they were, they've reestablished their balance during this period what, and even before we've quote reopened, that's what I think is amazing. All right, so here we go. Um, uh, let's see, what is next for each of you? Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, I have no idea. I thought I did. I, I really did. I thought I, I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I had a really good well, idea. We'll, we'll see what spirit has in mind for us, right, Dr. Yeah. Joe? We'll yeah. In the moment. And we don't know where everything is leading us. And um, yeah, no, I'll always be a minister now that, that I, I took the bait. And, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's really interesting because, you know, I'm also a court reporter. And so, of course, we can't take depositions together because of the distancing. And I have had so much fun. I've been real busy with Zoom. I've only taken a couple of depositions on Zoom, but I always like to meet with the attorneys beforehand on Zoom so they can feel comfortable about how to share a screen and this and that. And it's been fun because it's been playful getting to know our clients on a different level and for them to know I'm not just a reporter and I'm really helping them with their business. I'm not getting paid for that in that sense, but I, but it's been it's been it's been a joy. And I've had so many people say, you know, Laura, instead of me driving for two and a half hours to go to the de desert for an hour's deposition, 
I'm going to just start doing it this way, you know, and I have to even say the classes, even our practitioner classes, even though we miss each other, it's something nice about, okay, it's time for class, sit down at my table here and turn the screen on, see everybody all at once and, and share. And yet when it's over, I'm home. I don't have to drive another half an hour. And so, you know, so I try to keep always looking for the nuggets in every situation. And yeah. I think that's who will be always, right? Yeah. And I think I think it, it's not an all or nothing proposition. It's not, I think when things do go back to some what whatever we call it, you know, I think we've le all learned something from this experience that we're going to take from it. It's like, you don't have to drive the two hours. We're not going to have to do those things. Life can become a little bit easier for everyone when we when we try to put ourselves in this new model that we're creating right now. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Okay, so what's next for me? I have no idea. I thought I knew. You know what? I know that whatever it is, it's out there and it's waiting for me to show up. And I know it's going to be good. In fact, I know it's going to be great. It's just a matter of time to walk through it and go, you know what? It is. This is going to be what it's going to be. I have no control over any of this situation. So now I have to surrender cool. to it. Yeah, Joe, you're used to having control, <laughs> right? This has been, I mean, because I've been with him for so long. Uh. I, so well. And this is to see him just to say, okay. I just have to trust and turn it over and just, and he's showing up in such a, you're probably working harder now than you worked when we were open, right? Well, what's interesting <laughs> is this was supposed to be my time to wind down. <laughs> this is my wind. I'm like every day, 10 o'clock. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This was supposed to be my wind down time. And, and, and you know, it's all fine. It's all great. I, I'm glad to be of service because I'm really excited to see, um, you know, what can happen. Uh, it's it you know what tell god your plan and that's the best laugh line of ever right it just exactly. just not, it's exactly. like just okay uh, i get it i get it i get it uh, and so i'm constantly being reminded joe just just know but i do know one thing i do know one thing i mean I, my plan has not changed i'm not you know changing my timing may have changed but the plan has not changed all right a couple things um Lacey Murphy, my son's birthday is on Monday. Yay, thank you. We share a birthday. Yes, we might have to go to three services during the summer instead of one. Thank you. We are already talking about We already talked about that. Oh. Yeah, we've actually talked about, and I'll share that with you online here. Uh, we talked about if we have to do, and this is just one of those things that's up in the air, but we've been playing with the idea that if we have to do three services uh, because of the numbers, there would be an eight o'clock service, which I would like to have the most people who feel most vulnerable uh, physically uh, attend that service because the sanctuary will have been sterilized just before that or clean, not sterilized, but it will have been cleaned thoroughly. And then we will be able to do a quieter 8 a.m. service and then we'll do a 930 service and probably 11. That's if we have to do that it depends on what, whether the crowds are there. So um, we're, we're being flexible and just knowing that whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen. Uh, will you do this again? Sure, we'll do this again. Yes. Sure, we'll do this again. Absolutely, we'll do this again. Oh, oh, wow. Someone got really angry or bitter. Micromanager comes to mind. Oh, whoever you are, I'll hunt you down. Okay. <laughs> there must be somebody from the office. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing this again. I've got a couple requests to have bring David Alt back, so we'll be doing that as, as well. So you'll see David back. Laura and I are back next week on Tuesday uh, by special request. <laughs> Trey and I are going to do oh! a show with Charles. Um, the oh, people say they want to get to know Trey because a lot of people really don't know Trey. So that's going to be, tune in for that one. Um, if you were a book with blank pages, how would you write the forward? Um I have a book title. I'm not sure of the forward. My forward would be thank you, God. I mean, my title of my book would be thank you, God, for being smarter than me. Mine would be my, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank I you, like God, that. for being smarter than me. Yeah. Thank you for keeping me from myself. Yeah. Um, mine would be just when you thought you had it all figured out. Surprise! Things begin to change. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what I would that's how I would say that. Just when you thought you had it all figured out, things begin to change or things will change. And, and that's okay. That's okay. 
All right, next thing. Uh, you've taught not to be a leaf in the wind, but the person controlling the sail when the winds change. Absolutely. You know what? That's one thing I will say this. Um, this is this is a time, and I think David and I talked about it, this is a time for us to be looking at the anchors that we've put overboard for so many years that have been dragging our sailboat down. And now it's time to be, it's time to look at those things and discard them because there's no better time to do that than now. You can't say I'm too busy doing something, this, that, or the other thing, because most of people are on a lockdown situation. So now is the time to get rid of some of those anchors so that you're free. So when things begin to free up, you're free to actually take advantage of that new freedom. So that's what I'm going to call it. You know, you're free to take advantage of the new freedom. Yeah. And I'd like to share in, in the book on the Wayne Dyer book, he said, don't live in the wake of life. When you're in a boat, you know, you want to be at the, the helm driving the boat. Don't be living back in the wake of, of what's going on and let it push you around. You need to be in that focus and where you're going. Now, okay. So I had a different analogy about the wake. Okay. Okay. Yes. I want to be in the boat. Right. I want to be in control of the boat, but I'm not, I can't control the boat right now. I feel like my boat is, but I am skiing behind the boat. Okay. And if you're a water skier, you know, this, the water is the smoothest behind the boat because the boat actually breaks down the water. So the waves are smaller. So mm -hmm. I don't have to be sitting out there swinging side to side getting bounced by the by the big waves, I can get behind and ride the wake of my faith and go, okay, the waves have been diminished because this boat has cut through them. So I'm not being jarred as much. So that's one of the, so while if you can't drive the boat, be at the helm of the boat, because sometimes we can't, then this would well, that's be a good. That's a good, I, I've never water skied. So I didn't know that. Oh yeah, no, I, I was broke. I ever do. Yeah. Uh, let's see. If you're not the lead dog, the scenery never changes. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Are transition plans still in place. Um, yes, the I, I, I'm. I, you're probably not talking about like transition as in the next world, but you're talking about the transition of leadership. They are still in place, but they've changed a little bit in terms of timing. Right. Um, I'll just say this: I, I have no intentions of leaving until everything is. <laughs> The way I, the way, the, the best we can possibly be. And that was my original intent. We got delayed. I think uh, I really wanted Reverend Charles to go through a very busy season from January to April. And um, that just didn't happen. So um, it, it's, it's just, it's just what it is. So, you know, I, I don't know. Look at me. I'm just being very indecisive. I don't know, but the universe knows. And when I, when I, when we figure it out, you'll be the first ones to know. But no, um, we're still on track for, excuse me, I am still looking to retire. Uh, that is, that, that's not off the plate. Uh, it's not if, it's when. And when it's right, we'll do it. Um, uh, let's see, I want, uh, let's see, I want to be the drone in the air above the waves. <laughs> I just have to learn how to fly the drone. That's right. All right. Um, our extra time with you, Dr. Joe, uh, has let us see another side of you that has helped us and probably you too. Thank you. Well, I agree. Thank you. I, I have enjoyed doing these things that we've been doing. And it's kind of different to do like a talk show instead of doing a talk. Right. You know, you know right. move over Jimmy Kimmel. Um, you know, we'll, well have a You can be playful. You can be playful and kind of let your hair down and not feel like I've got to get this message out, you know, and yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's, it, the whole thing has just been different. I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe it because doing a Sunday service where you're talking to a little bitty hole, you know, and, and instead of having the interaction of and the give and the take and the energy, the exchange that you have with people and, and even though, uh, you know, I know Jeff is behind the camera and someone else is the way, way back in the room, it doesn't, it does, you don't have that. You know, the energy. And even then doing this, it's like you have one other person, but it's, it's very different. So thank you. I appreciate that. And, and um, I'm sure you're going to see more of me. All right. So we're coming up on the top of the hour and I want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, the bid is now up to $400. So you have to exceed $400 if you want to take advantage of the. Do I hear five? Do I hear five, six, seven? Uh, it is. It's great. No, I, I wish you, we're going to have to have a, a point. Uh, this is going to go on to the beginning of, uh, I think, middle of June, the middle of June. 
Uh, the reason why is because we're hoping that in the next phase, in, in stage two, uh, that you are able to look at, we'll have it at the center so you can actually just stop by and see it because it is a magnificent piece. It's, it's very textured. It looks flat here, but it's not. So again, this is up for auction right now. And uh, Rob Lamagno, he did the artwork. He's an artist that has been displayed at the Heath Gallery here in Palm Springs. Also, he's got uh, some work at Vicky's at Santa Fe, some big work at Vicky's at Santa Fe. Um, and he's doing that to, be, to raise money. It's like an auction. Uh, to raise money to help the church offset the $13,000 repair on our roof, $15,000 repair on our roof. So if you have $15,000 that you would love to donate, we'll get this to you. Um, but we're trying to, uh, what a time for the roof to have leaks now. And now it's clean, but we still have to fix it. Um, we're not worried about rain now, but we did have to fix it. So um, he's raising money for the roof and also to offset some of the employee expense because we have, up till now, we've kept everybody on the payroll. Uh, of our of our center to keep them moving. We didn't want our people being homeless or getting kicked out. So that was donated by Rob. It is a mixed media acrylic glaze, 24 by 48. And uh, it looks beautiful. It will be beautiful in your home. Again, the bid is now up to $400. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see, I'm in the final comments. Oh, and they can't wait for Tuesday. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> I am really nervous about that. Let's see, you, Dr. Joe, have changed so much during these. Bravo, it's me. All right, no, okay. Well, he hasn't changed. You guys just didn't see the side of him. This is how he's always been, I think. I Don't think you? Always been. Um, <laughs> can't wait for Tuesday. I, I tell you what, I can't wait till Bosley Hair Clinic opens <laughs> after this experience. Um, as a new member of CSL, I'm so grateful for all of these shows. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much more interactive in some ways can we can we get to ask questions yeah there's yeah you could put whoever interesting newbie is uh ask your questions uh put it at the start of the hour to start popping them in because like right now we go through those you might want to angle it in a better uh way so that we can see it much better yeah i know the problem is if i angle it let me show you if i angle it from my okay i have a laptop a giant laptop over here but then i look like a giant head so um it's on our website let's see uh, that would be down. It's on our website. Pictures of it are on our website, little better ones. So um, anyway, so that's it. But if I, okay, so there you go. Let's see. Uh, thank you, Dr. Moore, for reflections. Okay. Um, that's it. I think, okay, I think we got through all of our comments and questions. Did we, Jeff? Are we good? Because it's 11.02. And I like to keep this right in there. That covers everyone. Thank you. And then don't forget, we have our face mat, our face coverings. If you're interested in one of those, uh, Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert face coverings, um, changing lives one heart at a time. It says Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert. You can be in walking ad for our center when you go into these places for now. And that's it. So I'm going to pray us out. So let's take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, we do so knowing that something wonderful just happened again today, that something was said or something was mentioned that can change your day and your tomorrow and your life. So we allow ourselves to be receptive to that idea, to embody that idea and to put it into practice. We know that we've all been divinely guided, sustained and maintained by that infinite presence as it continues to guide, sustain and maintain each and every one of us now. We pray for all those frontline responders and for all those people who are out in the workforce, keeping us moving and keeping society as a whole moving in the right direction. We pray for those leaders that they're open and receptive to hearing the messages that need to be heard and that they are too divinely guided for the highest and best good of all people. And so I pray for myself and I pray for you and we know this, something wonderful just happened and you were part of it. For this, we're so very grateful. We call it good, we let it be so and together we say. And so it is. All right, everybody, check out the web page. Uh, there is a donation uh, button underneath here. Please donate to the center. Uh, give whatever you can. Every single penny counts. And uh, again, we want to be who you want us to be when we return. So we need you to be there for us consistently right here and now. All right. Every gift is important. Thank you so much. Have a great Friday. Uh, I think Reverend Ruth Ann is doing her meditation tomorrow at 10. And um, Eddie Watkins Jr. is going to be doing the music on Sunday. And the Sunday talk is all prepared. So we're good to go. So we'll see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye Laura. Thank you, Dr. Bye, Laura. Thank you.